Hello and welcome to another tutorial on LaTeX for Java developers and uh, we looked at uh, basically what a WYSIWYG word processor is, what LaTeX is and we said that it's it's a word processor in the sense that it's more like a typesetter so we instead of uh, uh, having a graphical interface and drag and dropping images and this kind of stuff we feed uh, the word processor LaTeX, we feed it a tech file that has tech commands that tell the types of the what to do and uh, that then uh, LaTeX uh, basically processes that and eventually outputs some sort of uh, document in the format of PDF or any type that any other type that we might need right and then we saw we saw that even WYSIWYG application like Microsoft Office uh, they support writing uh, the LaTeX math, math commands because LaTeX was originally developed for writing very beautiful equations and uh, and then uh, that's a very nice feature to have even in uh, basically WYSIWYG, WYSIWYG applications like Microsoft Office and the, basically the LaTeX math commands are very popular in this uh, in this regard and so how do we create a new document in LaTeX obviously before remember what the end goal of these lectures are the end goal is uh, uh, the end goal is to develop a Java API that can help us create beautiful uh, PDF documents using LaTeX in Java, right? So first we have to understand what how LaTeX works, how we can create documents. So we have to understand the LaTeX commands and then uh, uh, the LaTeX basically commands that we can actually put inside a tech file. So we have to first understand LaTeX and that's one of the goals of uh, these lectures. I want to teach you in a very in-depth uh, uh, I want to really focus on an in-depth understanding of LaTeX and then we also look at the Java, right? So the Java side and how we can uh, take advantage of LaTeX in Java. So obviously uh, the, we want to, at the end of the day, when we want, when we use LaTeX, we want to create a document. So how do we create a document? We have to create a .tex file, right? So that's the, uh, basically, uh, .tex is the raw text file that we feed to LaTeX engine, LaTeX typesetter, and then based on the commands, that LaTeX commands that we put inside this tech file, LaTeX understands what we want to do, right? We just tell it, do this stuff, and LaTeX knows how to do them, right, in an automatic way. So um, a general LaTeX command starts with backward slash and then the command name, right? Uh, there is no uh, spaces in between the parts, uh, different parts of the command. For example, uh, if we want to say document class, there is no uh, space. So in general, there is no uh, space in between the different parts uh, of the of the LaTeX command, right? So it's not document space class, it's document class, right? And uh, I believe all the commands, all the typical commands are lowercase and uh, I'm not sure if LaTeX is case sensitive or not, but we can try and see if LaTeX commands are case sensitive. And then after the backward slash and the command name, uh, <clears throat> we have a square brackets with options. So if the command uh, can be uh, uh, configured, so the user may pass options, right? These options can be one option or a list of options or no options. So these uh, square brackets are empty. So in the case that uh, you don't have, you don't want to pass any options to a LaTeX command, you can even om omit these uh, square brackets. And then the arguments uh, that uh, the, the, the command accepts, right? So options are one thing, arguments are another thing. In options, we, us we basically always have one uh, square bracket and the list of options. But arguments are inside curly brackets and it can be one argument or more than one. And each argument has to be in a separate curly, a separate pair of curly brackets, all right? And we will see uh, most of the time uh, the command accepts one argument, but there are cases where uh, the commands accept uh, more than one argument. And again, each argument has to be inside one separate pair of carry brackets, but all of the options must be inside one square bracket. So you can consider this as a list of options and you separate them with comma, but arguments are inside separate square brackets, right? 
So we create our document class so that uh, the very first thing that we need to tell LaTeX is that we're creating a document and this is the template that we want to use. Similar in the Word, Microsoft Word, for example, you can have a letter document or a, uh, some kind of template that you can use, right? So a document class is the template that uh, you use. Uh, so um, let me just write it down. So document class is like the uh, template that uh, we use for our document. So this is our template, right? And uh, um, that's the, the, the concept of document template. It's something that is uh, basically not just uh, specific to LaTeX, any word processor can allow you to choose between different templates. And here I'm saying, that, okay, I'm starting a document, right? And the class is article, which means uh, the template that I'm going to choose is article. And you can guess that an article has a title, has uh, can have the name of the author, can have some sort of abstract, and then different sections, introduction, conclusions, a list of references, and this kind of stuff, right? But then when we tell the LaTeX what kind of uh, template we're going to use, let's say article. The actual text, the raw text that goes into our document when we, let's say, generate a PDF file is going to be inside a document environment. So from this, uh, uh, basically, uh, from this begin to end, this is uh, any text that we put in between this is called, uh, is go goes into our document. So in order to uh, start writing a document, we have to first create a document environment. And again, we will look at the environments in more details. But again, the general idea here is that in LaTeX, everything starts and ends with environment, right? If I want to start writing, creating my document, writing a text file here, hello world, for example, is going to be inside document. I have to create first a document environment. The command is begin. Any environment starts with begin. And then in the arguments that this begin command accepts, right? Begin and curly brackets is a, is a command, right? And then a, an environment basically is a command that starts with begin. It can accept some arguments and then also has an end command that uh, has the same name, right? So a begin command, end command, the type of environment is usually inside these arguments, right? This begin and end accept the type of environment. For math, we say begin equation. For figure, we say begin figure or something like that. So for in order to add the text, our, our document to our template file, template LaTeX uh, doc, uh, article, for example, we have to create a uh, document environment with begin command and end command. And then before creating a document, we can add preambles. Preamble is anything that goes before the anything that goes before the begin command of our document so preamble is also a very useful thing that's actually the thing that allows us to use java packages uh, sorry latex packages and that makes latex very powerful right so preambles obviously this document class article is also a preamble that tells latex what kind of document template we want to use a specify the font of article. So obviously this document class starts with backslash. It means it's a latex command. And again, if you look at the general format, it means that uh, it can accept some options. One, one type of option is, uh, for example, telling what font size to use. 10 PT, uh, to, uh, 10, 12. I, I, I think you cannot put any type. You cannot say, for example, 10.5. So these are predefined types and you can just google them search the internet to see what uh, types are typically uh, what font sizes are supported right obviously you can change the size of the font of any part of the document later on but in the document class template uh, this is the font that by default applies to all the uh, any text that you add to the, uh, the document right so after the begin document, after you create this uh, document environment that end, it starts with begin command and ends with end command, you can put your uh, main text after the, in between, right? And we typically use PDF LaTeX as the typesetter. There are also other types. So other typesetters include, for example, Z LaTeX, and you can uh, you can uh, search uh, Google to see what. Uh, 
other type of uh, type setters are available, right? So in these lectures, I'm going to focus on PDF LaTeX and it is going to create a PDF output for us, right? So that's how a typical uh, uh, LaTeX document begins, right? So we tell LaTeX what template to use, article, a report, a, a PowerPoint, and then we create a document environment, put our main text, figures, everything here, right? In the document environment. And we can use different uh, LaTeX packages and we have to tell LaTeX to use them. Obviously, intuitively, you can say that the command is backslash use package. And in the argument, we can tell the name of the package. And that's exactly what happens in the preamble before beginning the document. So, um, uh, there are different ways and different uh, GUIs to create uh, PDF LaTeX or uh, use LaTeX. The first thing that I'm going to show you here is that uh, any graphical user interface that you choose, any application that you choose that to create LaTeX, it's just a GUI that allows you to create the tech file. And then after that, it's the LaTeX command line tool that is being called and this tech file is fed to it. So I'm going to fire up my terminal and show you that I have already PDF LaTeX on my path environment variable. So you see I've installed MacTech package and so the PDF LaTeX, it's inside this tech bin. If I open up this tech bin, you see there are lots of different binaries in them. PDF LaTeX is one of them, is actually one of the typesetters of LaTeX. And then uh, uh, now that PDF LaTeX is on the path environment variable, I can uh, access it from anywhere. And typically when you install some sort of software to use LaTeX, uh, typically they, real, they, uh, they rely on the fact that they assume the PDF LaTeX or all the LaTeX typesetters are on the path environment variable. So they can call it from wherever on the system, right? And uh, that's the same assumption I'm going to make. I'm going to talk about how to actually inspect the path environment variable in Java later on. And that's a very important thing to do because if we create the tech file using our Java API, we want to eventually call the PDF LaTeX or one of the LaTeX typesetters and feed that tech file. And we have to be able to call it, right? And uh, in order to be able to find the PDF LaTeX binary and execute it, we have to, uh, this PDF LaTeX should be on the path environment variable. Obviously, you can check what is uh, on your path in Mac or Linux by using the echo path command, right? You can see what's on the path environment variable. And uh, uh, I can also look at which version of PDF LaTeX I'm using. Uh, the standard hyphen hyphen version is the standard uh, command line uh, uh, argument that comes with most of the binaries on the, on the executable binaries. So I'm using PDF LaTeX version Pi 3.14.15. And it's a very recent version. I updated to the latest uh, 2020 version. And uh, my package manager for LaTeX is Tech Life, which I showed you in the first uh, lecture on how to use it, how to use Tech Life to basically update the LaTeX packages. So it's always good to have a package manager because you want to make sure you always have the most up to date version of LaTeX. So let's just quickly uh, uh, create a document. So uh, I mentioned that TechShop comes by default with uh, uh, with MacTech. If you install the MacTech distribution, it's a full package. It's a very large download size, like two gigabyte, but it's very well worth it because then uh, you can use TechLife to update it. But I wanna, here I want to actually uh, keep track of the tech file and, and the examples in my Eclipse. And I've created a LaTeX 4J project that I'm going to develop the Java API for LaTeX here, but here is the test LaTeX and I have created a LaTeX tutorials. So uh, let's create a folder here, um, tutorial one or underscore one. And here I'm just creating a new file. Let's call this uh, uh, tut uh, tutorial one.tex, right? So LaTeX files are .tex tech. All right, and you see it automatically opens it with the tech shop because I've associated this extension with my tech shop. Eclipse also suggests that we may search in the Eclipse marketplace. Uh, for now, I'm not going to uh, do that. So um, 
Again, uh, this tech shop is just a GUI that allows us to write tech commands. But behind the scenes, once we're done and we hit this typeset, it's going to call the PDF LaTeX. So let's see, document uh, uh, class, and I'm not going to pass any options. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to create an RTKL. And then I just, I'm not going to use any preamble or LaTeX package at the moment. I just want to quickly add some, uh, start my document, right? And then let's just write hello world. All right. And hit save. It's saved. And if I hit typeset, uh, you see that it uh, creates the PDF file. And then we also have a magnifier here to look at the uh, LaTeX. And obviously, you see it has a log file that tells you, okay, it's running the PDF tech version 3, 14, 15. Tech life to this is exactly the version that I saw. And it tells you what's going on. And we will look at all the details of what's going on. Uh, uh, in the when LaTeX is uh, going through your tech document and uh, eventually it generates a PDF file. Now, if I close this, you see in the folder now we have a couple of files, and uh, I'll discuss in the next lectures what these files are. One obviously is the PDF output, and I've already installed a plugin in my Eclipse ID so that I can open PDF documents and it has some nice features, for example, zooming and then resizing back. All right. So it's good to have this PDF viewer plugin in your Eclipse so you can open PDF documents. And then we have the log and the log just tells you the entire log uh, that the LaTeX outputs. It has some interesting things and then uh, we can look at this in the next lectures. And as I mentioned before, there is some auxiliary file and LaTeX creates this auxiliary file the first time it passes through your tech document. And it, this is more like a, a basically notebook for LaTeX. So LaTeX goes through your document from the first line to the end, and it creates notes of what has to be done. For example, if you have a table of content, it creates a note that, okay, I have to create a table of content. Once the auxiliary file is done, LaTeX goes back and it starts from, uh, goes through the notes again and calls different binaries, different command lines, tools that come from your LaTeX package that do different jobs. For example, there is one that creates a table of content. There is one that takes care of generating hyperlinks into your PDF, etc. right? So te te PDF LaTeX, for example, the typesetter orchestrates uh, uh, the, or the generation of your PDF LaTeX, right? Now there is also this sync tech file, and this is something that is special to like PDF, uh, the the uh, basically uh, the tech GUIs that also have a PDF view, right? So this tech shop comes also a PDF viewer, and this sync allows you to, if I hit command and click on the some text in my text editor, it tells me where it is in the PDF file, right? Same here. So if I right click and, for example. Uh, uh, if I hit con command and click on the a word in the PDF viewer, it tells me where it is inside the LaTeX. Obviously, you can assume that we might have a very huge tech file. And then uh, at some point, we may want to change, for example, the color of this text. So we have to quickly figure, figure out where it is inside the tech file. That's what that sync uh, tech is, right? Uh, that's sync tech, right? That's something that LaTeX generates and uh, for our purposes, it's not that important. Now, the other thing that I want to show you in this tutorial is that, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, tech shop uh, behind the scenes, once you create its tech file, any uh, graphical interface for LaTeX eventually calls the command line tool PDF LaTeX and feeds this tech document. In order to see that, I'm going to create all these files, right? And I'm going to create a terminal in my Eclipse at this location. All right. Let's make sure that the PDF LaTeX is accessible inside my Eclipse. So PDF LaTeX, it is. And if you run this inside the terminal in your Eclipse and you can't find it, it means that uh, the path environment variable is not accessible to Eclipse inside Eclipse. Typically that happens if you don't, I mean, if you want the path to be accessible within your Eclipse, you have to run the Eclipse from your terminal, right? 
in Unix systems like Mac or Linux, when you run an application or start an application like Eclipse from the terminal or command line, the path environment variable automatically is accessible to your software, right? So I launched my Eclipse from the terminal so that the path is there. So if I list my uh, folder, you see I have this tutorial one take and I can uh, call the PDF LaTeX typesetter on this tech file. So tutorial one.tech and it outputs the same log. Uh, uh, this is PDF LaTeX and exactly the same thing that was outputted when we run uh, TechShop, right? So again, the same idea, the PDF is generated, the auxiliary file generated, the log file is generated, but you see that the sync file was not generated because we're uh, basically running the PDF LaTeX from the, uh, from the command line and the, the sync file gets generated if you have a PDF viewer, if your application has a PDF viewer that can allow you to also see the PDF uh, on the side of your, uh, uh, basically um, on your uh, raw tech file. And right now the sync file was not generated, right? So if I hit, if I select something and click command and click on this, it's not going to tell me where it is inside the PDF. But in the PDF, if I right click and say sync, and let's see if the sync file is generated. So let's uh, refresh this. It didn't, so what I need to do basically, I have to run the LaTeX from the inside this uh, GUI, right? And uh, now the sync file should be generated, yes. The sync file is generated by this uh, GUI tech shop. And now if I hit command and click on a word, it tells me where it is inside the PDF. And vice versa, if I select a word in the PDF and hit command and click on the word, it tells me where it is inside the tech, right? But uh, in terms of just uh, uh, running the LaTeX from command line, we don't really need this tech file. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture and now have some understanding on how to run the PDF LaTeX from the command line, what the LaTeX is, how it works, and please stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.